afternoon. My name is Andrew Pilato from Kyocera International in San Diego, and this is Sean Shadrock. And today we're going to be demonstrating the multi-beam capability of our phased array antenna that's been designed for hair station applications. So Kyocera has designed and manufactured several different sizes of phased array antennas, some very small 16 elements to 32 elements to 64 elements. But the ones that we're showing here today have been designed for base station, so much larger antennas. So these are two of the antenna platforms that we've developed. One 512 element array that scans in a cone, plus or minus 60 degrees in azimuth, plus or minus 60 degrees in elevation, with no grading lobes above the horizon. And the one that we're showing in this Roden Schwartz chamber is a 384 element array, also dual pole, that scans plus or minus uh, 60 degree in azimuth, plus or minus 15 degree in elevation, with no grading lobes above the horizon. This is a close-up of the antenna and, and, and an animation of the beam shaping, the dynamic beam shaping capability that we programmed into this antenna as required by one of our um, base station customers. To be specific, they have asked us for seven types of beams from very wide 110 degree beam width to very narrow at 15 degree beam width. And then also the intrinsic beam, which is uniform illumination, as well as taking that intrinsic beam and lowering the side low from 13 to 17 to 20 to 25 dB. And of course, those side lobes have to be preserved over the entire field of view. So no grading lobes above the horizon. Here's a picture of some measured beams at a plus or minus 60 degree azimuth scan with very low side lobes. In this case, minus 23 dB. So we believe this is important as we, um, as we approach these multi-beam deployments so that many beams can be operated simultaneously and you have the ability to shape the beam and to lower the side lobes to minimize beam coupling. Such, it's sort of an analog pre-coding that's, that's layered on top of the digital pre-coding to sort of alleviate some of that digital pre-coding processing that's in the back. That's what we've been asked to uh, do. So we prepared a series of six demonstrations covering portions of the N257 band that are going to be employed in Japan. Um, and based on which customer is coming, we're going to show them their frequency band. Our last demonstration covers the entire N N257 band. So we can operate this antenna really in three modes. Use the antenna as one large 384 element array, and there's two beams, a V beam and an H beam, or we split the antenna into two pieces, 192 elements, 192 elements, and have four beams, V and H, or we split it into four pieces and have eight beams. Because the spec is AT8R, this antenna can support AT8R. So that means eight simultaneous beams pointing in eight different directions. They could be the same frequency, they can be different frequencies. So we're going to show you actually these, um, some of these demonstrations. There's four of them, actually. We're going to look at pointing the beam in four different directions. Um, we want to thank Roden Schwartz for graciously providing us with this wonderful 1800M chamber. It's a multi-beam chamber, and it has four reflectors. So we're going to point one, one beam at zero degrees, one beam at 60, one beam at 90, and one beam at 150. And there are no grading lobes above the horizon. So 150 degree field of view. So Sean will show you our first demonstration. All right. Okay. Thank you, Andy, for the a very strong presentation. So the, the first demo that we have here, we have four simultaneous beam at four different frequency pointing at four different reflectors here. So these are the frequency of interest for this particular demo that that happening from 29.1 20 29 to 29.5. And that's a live demo. You can see through the thermal camera inside of the chamber of uh, the, the, the heat that the um, antenna is generating and also at the same time pointing at four different uh, reflectors. So this is in receive mode to be on the safer side because the antenna has a very strong radiation pattern. So you see these four beams here, all four of them, they have a great EVM and each one of these is 50 megahertz bandwidth. So for the first demonstration, we are gonna start toggling the beam meaning that we are going to point the beam one by one at each different reflector and then combine two subarray and then start pointing at four different subarray one at the time. 
and eventually we are going to combine all four subarrays together to one strong beam and start pointing at different angles of each reflectors inside and then again going through the same loop. That's for the first demonstration. For the second demonstration, what we have, as, as we talk, we, we want to lower down the silo. Once we lower down the silo, we can have so many different benefits, um, such as better accuracy, better uh, target detection, wider beam, and uh, efficient beams. So for this demo, as you can see, you just point at one of the reflectors, lower down the silo, point at another one, lower the silo. These silos, as you can see, go all the way down to the noise level. And what it creates is beam agility. So if you have two target, meaning that you can bring them much closer to each other uh, without having much issues, because these, these guys are the ones that usually causing the problem, which we can push them down all the way down to the noise floor. For the next demonstration, what we have, we have different beam weights. So in 3GPP requirement for the FR2, they usually required anywhere from 50 megahertz, 100 megahertz, 200, all the way up to 400 megahertz. And we can see 800 megahertz is coming also for FR2. So first we turn on each beam at 50. Now we just double the bandwidth to have 100 megahertz, 100 and 100 and 100 megahertz for each beam. So we just want to show that these four beams that we talk about, that they're pointing at different reflectors at the same time can have different bandwidth at the at the same time. And then eventually we can merge two subarrays together and put 200 megahertz bandwidth and merge the other two together and point to a different reflector and have another 200. And for the last demonstration, we are gonna merge in all four beams into one strong beam and have one continuous 400 megahertz bandwidth. So in all these demonstrations that, that Sean has shown, we've been operating at 256 QAM. So most deployments in the U.S. for millimeter wave are operating at 64 qualm. So we've been asked to push this to uh, 256 qualm or 8 bits per symbol. So when we're at 400 megahertz bandwidth per beam, that's 400 megahertz times 8 bits. That's 3.2 gigabits per second per beam. And there's 8 beams, so that's 25.6 gigabits per second throughput through the antenna. So 8, eight bits per symbol, that's good for now. but we need to be ahead of where the DU and CU people are. So we're looking ahead. We need to get to 10 bits per symbol, which is 1024 calm. So we've started working on this. And our chip people have started working on one modification that, that they need to make for the chip. But we can show you some 1024 calm operation right now. Okay, thank you, Andy. So as you can see here, what we did, we just pointed one of the subarrays to one of the reflectors and we increase the beam to 400 megahertz bandwidth and 1024 qual. Very good EVM, less than 2% EVM, and that's a live demo. So basically, because we can generate all the way up to a simultaneous beam, they can have 32 gigabits per second. That's a huge throughput that they can achieve. With the help of Rodi Shores, we can have a very successful demo, and thank you.